Greetings fellow investors, today we will look at the top 3 ETFs that you can use as a European investor if you want to invest in India. Boom. We will look at things such as the expense ratio, what these ETFs are comprised of, as well as how well these have performed in the last years. By the way, if you're new to ETFs, I highly recommend that you check out our videos on what ETFs are. But really all you need to know for this video is that they are a financial instrument that allows you to invest into a basket of companies instead of just one at a time. I think you will understand even better what I mean as the video progresses. Finally, we will discuss why the future for India looks so bright in my but also many other investors opinion. Okay, let's jump right in shall we? So first on the list we have Franklin FTSE India Usits ETF. Oof, all of these names are quite horrible but don't worry about it, Lucas got you. First, FTSE means or stands for I should say Financial Time Stock Exchange Group. They are a British financial organization that specializes in providing index offering for the global financial markets. USITS on the other hand stands for Undertakings for Collective Investments, uh, Investment in Transferable Securities, which is defined as organizations whose sole purpose is to collectively invest into securities and other financial assets, capital that has been raised by the public and which operate under the principle of risk management. This... <laughs> This is such an unnecessary complex way to write it. What this means is that this is a company that collects money from the public who wish to invest it and invest it for them accordingly to a specific index. Boom. So let us look at the stats for this Franklin FTSE India. Let's start off with the expense ratio. Expense ratio looks really good on this one, 0.19%. My general rule of thumb is that I really like to see below 0.5 and uh, this fulfills that wish from me so that's good this expense ratio or fee is automatically deducted from the total amount of your investments into this ETF each and every year so that's how that works then if we look at the composition of the ETF here we have the sectors let's start there first we have financials followed by technology energy basic materials consumer discretionary consumer staples industrials healthcare utilities and other so the majority of your money is going to be going towards financials and technology. The companies that the majority of the money is going to go towards is these right here and some more. But these are the top 10 holdings and these make up 40% of the total ETF. So here we have Alliance Industries, Infosys, Housing Development, TATA. And what you'll notice is that these companies are going to be almost identical on all of these lists. And so with that, let us see how it's done. What have been the returns these last years? This is quite a new ETF. So we the, the the sort of oldest year that we have is 2020. That was quite a bad year for the stock market as a whole. And probably especially I would imagine India because of Corona. A lot of their money comes from export. So, so in 2020 we have 3% return. Then in 2021 a lot better, 35%. And now year to date, so just in half, half a month basically. Because I'm filming this on the 18th of January. We ha already have a return of 4.32%. As you can see, these ETFs are definitely what you would call uh, growth ETFs. And uh, this is why I really like India, but I'll talk more about that in a second. For now, let's jump on to our second ETF. We have iShares uh, MSCI India, use its ETF US dollar. So again, first let's look at the name so we understand what this actually is. iShares is a collection of exchange traded funds or ETFs managed by BlackRock. BlackRock is one of the biggest, I think, investment firms in the world. Ah, world's largest asset manager. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so not one of the largest. MS CI is an acronym for Morgan Stanley Capital International and this is an investment research firm that provides stock indices, portfolio risk and performance analytics and governance tools to institutional investors and hedge funds. Basically from left to right you have the name of the company who allocates this money for you. You have the company who has done the research about which companies should be on the list and uh, what's the risk profile for them and what are the possible returns. So so you have a owner, researcher, which country these companies exist in. The fact that this is a, like a public ETF, a UCITS, the same as we already talked about. So an undertakings for collective investment in transferable securities. And then US USD, which just stands for the currency you buy it in. So if we again look at the expense ratio of iShares uh, 
MSCI India. First, it's quite high. It's higher than I would like, 0.65%. And uh, if we look at the sectors and what it, the companies that it contains, we have again similar sectors, very very similar, very similar percentages. Like let me just let me look at this side by side for a second. The first look very similar. It's a bit more focused on technology. Uh, energy is almost identical. A bit less focus on basic materials. Yeah, and again we see the same companies and we see them in very similar percentages <laughs> so yeah just keep that in mind for now i'll i'll show you my I'll, I'll tell you my main point in just one second for now let's move on to the last one the nifty 50 so the nifty 50 is very similar to the s p 500 but instead of 500 it contains 50 of india's largest companies many of the names on this list as well is going to be very familiar to us by this point we have reliance industries we have data consultancies not Infosys, actually. Oh, there. Okay, never mind. Yeah, so we have Infosys. A bit different, like, uh, how much is invested in them, but similar nonetheless. And not only that, but the Nifty 50 has an expense ratio of 0.85%. This is actually quite a lot. My point is that the changes in the composition between these different ETFs are minuscule, or at least very, very small. And the subsequent returns, if we look at that, let's just check it out for a second. Here we have, uh, this is the iShares, this is the, the Franklin FTSC, the one with the cheap expense ratio. The yearly returns are almost identical, except maybe that the <laughs> Nifty 50 actually underperforms this cheap option. This is very limited data that we have here, but I think it sort of serves to show my point. In short, changes in the compositions of these different ETFs are very small, as you can see, and the subsequent returns are likely to be equally so, which we kind of saw already. On the other hand, something that should never be underestimated is the power of compounding. And these annual fees, they are gonna compound. For example, if you compare the Nifty 50 with the Franklin FTSE, which was the most expensive and the cheapest, the difference just in annual fee is going to cost you almost 20% of your total portfolio over an investment lifetime of 30 years. This is provided that they do more or less the same. So this is why, in general, I recommend you to stick with the expense ratio that is the lowest, provided that the ETFs contain more or less the same companies in the same sectors. Finally, I want to quickly go through why I believe India is such an exciting place to invest. There's a lot of reasons, of course, but here I'm going to go through at least five. First, India will have the largest working population by 2050, while at the same time having one of the lowest average age of its populations, meaning less people to care for. Second, India will have a great increase in its middle class with an predicted rate of 8.5% annually until 2030. The Indian middle class is expected to reach over 800 million people. India's estimated GDP growth rate until 2050 is expected to be around 5% annually, while the average expected global growth rate is estimated to be only 3% annually, and that of USA to be only around 2.5%. This is according to the PVC report. Number four, India is the largest democracy in the world, and this is hugely important, I believe. A lot of the troubles I've had <laughs> with some companies have invested in in China, for example, have been due to just how that country is run and like how scared people can get. And I don't think you will have the same issues in India. Number five, India's overall price to earnings ratio is 29.040 compared to the general S&P price to earnings ratio, which is 26.9. So on the one hand, you have this country that is expected to grow like crazy in the next decades. And on the other hand, you have the US who will probably continue to do great, but probably not grow as aggressively as India will. But they are still priced roughly the same. Well, you could argue that you get more security from the States and you'd be right. But the US stock market right now is really overpriced. There's no way around that. India, on the other hand, yes, it's also pricey, but there's a lot of growth in there. So I think right now in 2022, it makes a lot of sense to maybe put a bit more money into India compared to the United States as of right now, just due to how they are priced. But at the end of the day, I might very well be wrong. Trying to predict how companies in a country will do based on macroeconomics is a stupid game to play. I'm well aware of that. It's something Warren Buffett, for example, never does. He always looks 
at individual companies. But since we are trying to invest into an ETF, which invests into a basket of companies like we established, I think taking into account the general growth of that country and its population is more relevant than in many other cases. But still, I do agree with Warren that at the end of the day, it's going to be how solid are the fundamentals of these different companies that our money goes into. And to know that takes a lot and a lot of effort and work. Now, if you feel like ETFs are quite a good fit for you, but India, mm, you're still a bit skeptical on that one. Don't worry about it. Me and Marcus got you covered. Boom. Check out this video where we go through the top three ETFs available to people in Europe to invest in. Do it.